We've all been there. You're trying to get something done at work and your colleagues or supervisors just won't come around. You've tried logical, well-supported arguments. You've tried appealing to your audience's emotions or your company's mission, but nothing seems to cut it. What do you do? You try these five Real Talk tips for persuasion. These five tips will help you get stuff done even when your audience is stubborn, even when you don't have a lot of power in your company or organization. These tips are not about producing a genuine change of mind in your audience. You tried that, it didn't work. Instead, they're about effective, ethical ways of twisting your audience's arm. But before we dive in, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel. For the next few months, my colleagues and I in the Management Communication Center at the University of Florida will be posting actionable tips on workplace communication. By subscribing, you can also keep up with all the cool stuff going on at UF's Warrington College of Business. Okay, let's start with our first tip. Drive the conversation by doing the work. To illustrate this tip, imagine you're part of a small team tasked with solving a problem at work. Despite lots of discussion, your team still can't choose between two proposed solutions. To help tip the scales in favor of your preferred solution, get to work fleshing it out. Look into the solution's cost, staffing, and logistics. Draft some sample communications related to the solution. Maybe even solicit tentative approval from key decision makers. In short, make your solution easy to accept by bringing it within a hair's breadth of reality. Remember, most people would rather say yes to an existing solution they see as imperfect than wait for someone to create the perfect solution. Use this tendency to get stuff done. Tip two, be annoyingly persistent while of course remaining faultlessly professional. Fine, everybody complains about their broken record colleague, the person who returns again and again to the same idea or proposal. We get it, Dave. You think we should switch CRM software. But here's the thing, the Daves of this world, however annoying they may be, get stuff done. Their persistence works for two main reasons. First, their message discipline helps define workplace conversations around a given topic. And second, most of us care more about protecting our time than we do about playing defense. If saying yes to Dave's proposal gets him to shut up, doing so is, for many of us, a price well worth paying. So follow Dave's lead. Keep it professional, but be persistent. Tip three, use institutional authority wherever you can find it. Would your idea or solution lack credibility coming from the humble perch of your office or cubicle? If so, then find yourself a loftier perch. Volunteer for a project team, an ad hoc committee, in fact, any institutional foothold that lends your idea or your solution more credibility than it would have coming from you alone. In other words, think strategically about how the kinds of work you volunteer for can help advance your ideas and your goals. Tip four, get politicking. Build a consensus around your idea. So what if your boss doesn't like your idea? If you believe in it, go out and build a constituency. Invite colleagues to lunch or coffee and subtly pitch them on your idea. Find ways to seed your idea at team meetings or company happy hours. In short, adopt the attitude of a politician canvassing voters. Building a constituency around your idea multiplies your influence. It creates ambassadors for your idea who can advocate for that idea in a variety of settings. Building a constituency also imposes a cost on decision makers if they continue to resist your idea. Because if they do so, they're not just saying no to you, they're saying no to a whole community of supporters. Tip five, be a good colleague. People will do all kinds of things for people that they like. So go make yourself likable. Show kindness to your coworkers, lighten their load, demonstrate genuine care for their well-being, and generate some goodwill. Being a good colleague is not just the right thing to do. It's also a great way to predispose your coworkers to your ideas. And that brings us to the end of today's video. Thanks for checking out these five Real Talk tips for persuading people at work. If these tips have worked for you or if you have other great tips to share, let us know in the comments. 
Be sure to subscribe to learn more ways to improve your workday by communicating like an expert, and keep an eye out for more communication tips from me and my colleagues at the University of Florida's Management Communication Center.